Hello, everyone. Welcome to Monday. It's the start of a week. Hopefully, everybody's refreshed and rejuvenated. My name is Kelly Baltzell. I'm the CEO and owner of Beyond Indigo. Typically, on Mondays, we focus on marketing tips and trends for your veterinary hospital. And today, we are following that pattern. We have Alex Michelle with us. And Alex is really geeks out about the numbers. That's what I love about you, Alex. You just sit there and think about it and see how things put together. And he's going to give us a little insight on that. So today, today the conversation is underneath the hood of your marketing car. Um, just like a veterinary hospital, you can put hands on her, but having some blood work done and some diagnostics gives you an inside sight of what's happening with an animal. We use the same thing here for your marketing. We can see things on the outside, oh, pretty website, but we don't really know what people are doing with it. Um, so one of the tools we're gonna do, you're gonna talk about today is Google Analytics, right, Alex? Like, hey, what is, first of all, tell people what it is, because they may not know, and then what it does. Sound good? Sure, definitely. All righty, let's go. Great. So yeah, one of the free tools that Google provides among many of the other tools that we use to analyze what's going on on your website is Google Analytics. And uh, without going too in depth into how we install it, it's a uh, simple code that they uh, distribute after you've created a uh, property and that is installed on the website and it allows us to track uh, certain KPIs, certain metrics. Uh, data that we can use to interpret what's going on with your website. So I've pulled a couple screenshots here and what you'll see is kind of how I think about it and how other SEO analysts think about interpreting traffic uh, so that we can determine what's going on with uh, your website, how users are interacting with it, where they're coming from, and a whole host of other questions that we can use to figure out how we need to adjust our strategy to improve uh, what we're seeing. So the first screenshot I've pulled here is uh, a screenshot that shows uh, what focus channel uh, users are coming from. So when I talk about channel, I'm talking about which avenue uh, certain users uh, can come from uh, before they actually land on your website. And in search engine optimization, we usually focus on organic traffic and organic traffic focuses on traffic that is acquired from search engines, uh, including Google, Bing, Yahoo, and there's many other search engines uh, that users can use uh, to uh, enter a search query and bring up uh, website results. But uh, when it comes to the amount of searches that occur, the bulk are being performed by uh, those using Google and uh, a significant amount from Bing and Yahoo. So in this screenshot, I've pulled the last three years uh, for a particular client and the amount of uh, users that they have acquired monthly uh, from both um, all, uh, all of the channels that you can possibly receive traffic from. So I've included a couple descriptions below, you know, social, uh, that includes Facebook, Pinterest, uh, uh, Instagram, uh, many of the other social ch channels that you might be using to grab traffic. Uh, Google Ads, uh, referral traffic includes users who land on your site uh, by clicking on a link uh, on a third party website that points to yours. Uh, direct traffic, users entering the URL to your website right in their browser and then landing on your site that way. And then possible email campaigns where a link that you might send out in a direct email campaign may drive a user uh, to your website. But in this screenshot, in orange, you'll see a trend that shows organic traffic specifically. And the organic traffic, again, we focus on that with search engine optimization because typically when we see an increase or a decrease in organic traffic, it shows that, well, whether that is an increase or a decrease, what we need to focus on in our organic search results. So how our website is performing um, in search results for certain search queries. So in this screenshot, we see a nice little pretty trend going up. Doesn't always happen uh, like that. Doesn't always look that pretty. Uh, but typically when we see an organic trend going up, 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 just like that, uh, usually that's accompanied by increase in our website's rankings for high value keywords. And those high value keywords are another focus uh, that we spend time on 
um, integrating into the website so that we can see this increase uh, in organic uh, search traffic and organic users. And uh, next slide. The other thing we focus on is not only where our traffic is coming from in terms of the channel, but where the users are physically located. And this is very important for an industry like the veterinarian industry, where our users, um, our local users are very important uh, because in order to become a customer, in order to receive an, a customer acquisition, uh, local traffic is typically more important uh, when it comes to, you know, tails through your door and um, return on investment. So we focus on uh, local traffic and we focus on uh, particularly traffic that is received within, you know, 15 to 20 mile radius of the practice. Uh, we like to see that most of our traffic is coming from users who are, who are physically uh, located within a reasonable distance of the practice. Now, that isn't to say that traffic acquired from users all around the world isn't useful because it is. And when we dig more into um, geographic location and we dig into where users are acquired uh, from maybe several states away that may be finding the information that we're providing very useful, um, those, those positive interactions can lead to increased um, rankings in search results for local uh, searches. So indirectly, these users who are interacting with our website in a positive way, who may be, uh, you know, several hundred miles away, who may never become a client, can can lead to in, indirect and positive um, results uh, that actually can lead to return on investment. So although we do really focus on local traffic, it's okay if we are receiving traffic from uh, you know, users all around the world. And in the next slide, we can really break down which city uh, these users are uh, being acquired from. And as I'll get into in a moment, you'll see several columns which provide us with other types of data which indicate how users are interacting uh, with our site. And that gets into things like the time that they're spending on the website, and um, uh, what other pages they're visiting uh, and what actions that they are completing uh, while they're browsing uh, certain sites. And um, we, we analyze these KPIs all together uh, in order to determine the quality of the traffic that is reaching your site. Because it is our hope that not only are we providing you know, very positive information uh, uh, on our websites, but that users are not only spending time on our sites, they're completing the actions that we hope they'll take, such as, uh, you know, phone calls, uh, form submissions, um, but, uh, but that we are providing them with useful information and that they are getting um, something out of their interaction uh, with the site and with the information that we're providing on that site. And uh, lastly, uh, there is, uh, I provided this slide to kind of show you one of the individual KPIs that we like to focus on. And that is a KPI called entrances. And um, there, are many, there are many, many KPIs uh, that we focus on, but entrances show, uh, essentially how many times a user entered a specific page. And in this screenshot, for this particular client, I've segmented entrances from organic traffic. So those users who have entered not only from the channel from organic, but entrances to uh, blog posts related pages. And in, in search engine optimization, when we have a client who is uh, paying for a blog, one of the hopes is that we will be able to acquire as, as much quality traffic as possible, specifically from organic search. Even though we do try to drive traffic to a blog posts uh, uh, through you know, Facebook and, and uh, some of our other channels, uh, but uh, our hope is that the blog will enable us to gain traction in organic search 
and uh, drive uh, quality quality traffic. And again, the the uh, the blog posts are meant to provide very uh, you know useful information and uh, answer the questions that the users um, initially asked uh, in in um, you know whichever search engine they happen to be using. Um, and uh, and on uh, the very last slide, well, I guess we can speak about some of our uh, remaining topics. So you take all this information and then what? Well, after we've determined, uh, you know, usually when we look at um, a comparison or we, we usually like to start out with a client and look at how they've performed after a year or so and compare year over year. And ideally, we'd see an increase in organic traffic. And if we are providing a blog post, we'd, we'd would hopefully see that the blog post is acquiring much of that organic traffic and that the items that we've spent time on, uh, including uh, SEO optimization of these blog posts, um, that, that we have started to see not only an increase in traffic from organic, not only an increase in traffic from local, uh, locally um, uh, acquired users, but that these users are also completing form submissions for appointments, new client form submissions, essentially actions that will lead to uh, client acquisition, uh, because that's that is the point of all of this is to um, you know not only provide useful information but hopefully have clients come in and um, you know become become long term clients for. Uh, uh, our hospitals. So good content, like three blogs. Content helps generate traffic. SEO helps boost search engine optimization, that content to get the traffic that will lead to some sort of action. You know, book an appointment, fill out a form, make a phone call um, to get tails through the door. And Google Analytics helps track that whole process from start to finish of how is the potential client or current client moving through the website? So sort of like a river, like they come in through some door and then they weave their way through and then they do something. Google Analytics gets to track that journey the entire way, correct? Mm -hmm. Pretty much summing it all up. And then those forms and those grabs are your ways of just saying, and I mean, Google Analytics has hundreds of reports you can run. So partly knowing what report to run you know just like a medical doctor would know probably say no we need to really focus on the liver versus focusing on the bladder so we're going to run certain reports um, the same thing goes for marketing we don't look at necessarily all the reports hundreds of reports we look at the ones that are really honing in to what we're trying to achieve for the client mm -hmm. yep mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. yep now I know out there Google has a free course. It's called the Google Academy, Analytics Academy. And I think the first course is good just for a general overview so that you, you know, business owners or if you're the person in the veterinary hospital interfacing with a marketing company, it gives you some language and some lingo and just kind of overall of this is the report. You don't have to be an expert in it, but at least then you – um, have some empowerment of following along of when, you know, people like yourselves are saying, okay, this is what this report is showing. This is what it does. You maybe not feel so adrift. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I would recommend that as well. Definitely. Yeah. And then, and, you know, when you dig into some of this data, it can be very overwhelming and uh, it can be really easy to sometimes isolate certain metrics and think that something's going on because you might see one metric that might be performing poorly. So that's why it's good to kind of look at everything um, from sort of a high level view uh, in order to kind of really determine what's what's really going on with your traffic. And again, yeah, it's uh, it takes some time, but uh, taking a course like that would be uh, really beneficial to kind of learning how to interpret that data and how to move forward. Uh, you at least understand the, the lingo, right, and the keywords. You, you, we don't expect you, like, when I go into a veterinary hospital or my, in, uh, for my dog and they run through his blood work, you know, he's like, 
hey, this this result's low, but that's okay for his breed and age. Don't don't focus on that. But at least know what it is. And then this this is the one we're looking at. And this and you know you just need to know enough to be an educated consumer to follow along. Um, that would be my re recommendation to everybody out there. But not you you know you're not going to know all the ins and outs because that's a full time job. I mean, this is all you do all day long is numbers and tweaking things and setting up ads and SEO. And that's all you do. You don't have time for anything else. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> right? Because you laugh like, yeah, Kelly, that's true. Pretty much, pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. So, you know, this is somebody's full-time job. So thank you for showing us this today, Alex. And hopefully this was helpful to others just to A, know that you should have Google Analytics. It's free attached to your website. Um, so if you're not a Beyond Indigo client, double check with your own marketing provider. Um, you should be an admin and have the keys to this Google Analytical area because it's yours. It's your data. It should follow the life cycle of your website sites. As your websites change and evolve, the data stays running in the background. Um, so make sure that's going on and, and maybe learn a little bit about it. Ask a little bit about it, some questions because it really does matter and it does help. So thank you so much, everybody, today, and we hope you have a great rest of your week. Talk to you soon. Thank you.